Welcome to day 18 of our Advent journey. It has been such a pleasure being on this journey with you to take these few minutes each day to be in prayer, to hear and reflect on God's action in the world and in our lives, to pause for this time and acknowledge our connection with God and with one another. We are all so busy. It is easy to get swept from one day to another. There is always so much ready to claim our attention. It's all worthwhile, important, critical stuff, too. But we are also part of something greater than the individual pieces of our lives. Advent calls us to remember that. Hope is a candle that flickers, yet offers warmth and life. The darkness will turn into light, the moon shine as bright as the sun. Hope is a hand that grasps and reaches out in peace. The wolf will live with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the king, kid. Hope is a song that grows and fills the world with joy. The wilderness and dry land will be glad, the desert rejoice and bloom. Hope is a promise of a baby to be born in a manger stall. A woman shall bear a son and name him Emmanuel. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, for whom we long, we thank you for the gift of hope. Be our light in the darkness, that we may proclaim with Isaiah, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, your gift to all the world. Amen. The reading is from the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying in the bed with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she got up and began to serve him. That evening they brought to him many who were possessed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word and cured all who were sick. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took out our infirmities and bore our diseases. When he came to the other side, to the region of Gadarenes, two men possessed by demons came out of the tombs and met him. They were so fierce that no one could pass that way. Suddenly they shouted, What have you to do with us, son of God? Have you come here to torm us, torment us before the time? Now a large herd of swine was feeding at some distance from them, and the demons begged him, if you cast us out, send us into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. So they came out and entered the swine, and suddenly the whole herd stampeded down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the water. The swine herds ran off, and going into the, into the town, they told the whole story about what had happened to the men possessed by demons. Then the whole town came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their region. This is the word of the Lord. One of the questions I love to ask in Bible study is, what caught your attention? I don't know about you, but what caught my attention in our reading today was the final verse. They begged Jesus to leave their region. Jesus has just healed multiple people, 
from Simon Peter's mother-in-law to confronting and driving out two very fierce demons. Demons, it must be noted, who immediately recognize Jesus as the Son of God. Now, if you had such a healer in your midst, if you had someone bringing such comfort and renewed wholeness, wouldn't you want greater contact? Well, Matthew doesn't say here, but it is entirely possible that there were a few individuals, at least, who also recognized Jesus' identity and power and chose to follow him. Clearly, the majority did not want anything to do with him. Why? Well, one strong possibility is Jesus disrupts the status quo. Jesus coming into the world changes everything. And most people don't welcome change. I have seen this time and time again over the years. The person who comes to me as pastor struggling with a relationship or their job, or their living situation. They pour out their woes and struggle. They are so conscious that their lives are far less than desired. desired. With lots of listening and discussion, gradually there is a clarification of what is lacking or wrong. Then comes the next part. What does the person want to happen? More importantly, what is the person willing to do to achieve that? Invariably, this means some kind of change. Change in jobs. A different direction within the relationship. Maybe even ending the relationship, giving up some things in life and reaching for something new. Yeah, but see, the current situation is familiar. The current relationship, while unsatisfying, is stable. Who knows what might come from changing that? The fear of risk outweighs the hope of new life. And so the old life is continued. And any threats to that must be driven away. Is your life satisfying to you? I don't mean perfect or blissful. If so, well, then you are well along on your faith journey. If not, then Advent invites you to reflect on what you want to happen and what you are willing to do to achieve that.
Let us be together in prayer. For this time of waiting and watching for the coming of our Savior, we give thanks to you, O Lord. And the Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. We cry to you, O Lord. For the hope that shines through the darkest night, we turn to you, O Lord. For the gift of friends and family who walk with us through life, we praise your name, O Lord. I invite you at this time to lift other prayers to our God. Gather us all under the promise of your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. The peace of God accompany your waiting. The light of Christ warm your hearts. And the joy of the Spirit fill you with hope. Amen.